First of all, please hand in your notes. And you've all prepared a pronunciation improvement plan. There are a few of, a few of you who we've asked to make some improvements in the improvement plan to make it more specific. We need a week-by-week -week listing of which things you will be working on each week. In addition, in case I didn't make it clear, I want you to give a weekly progress report. You need to make a weekly progress report on your plan. How well did you do working on this particular feature, like, for example, using the intervocalic tap for T, or lengthening vowels before a voiced sound, things like that. So that may be your item for the week. And then at the end of the week, when you're getting your notes ready for Monday, make a progress report. Say how well you have done if you forgot to do it, or if you started remembering more and more often, if you maybe need to extend it another week or so, so we need a weekly progress report. Everybody has that? It's really important. Because otherwise, it's just something on paper. You need to really put it into practice. And then we want to see if you can do what? What's our goal in doing this? <coughs> Is the goal to make you think of the rule each time and then, and then go through a logical thought chain and then make the correction? Is that the goal? What is our goal in these weekly corrections that we're trying to make in our improvement plan? Is it to remember the rule and then go through the rule and then apply the rule and then say it? Is that our goal? That's, that's a middle part of the process. What is our goal? Right? There's a word I'm looking for. I'm fishing for a word. Habit, that's right. Habit isn't the one I was thinking of, but that's very good. We want to automate it. It needs to be automated so that it comes out without thinking. And without thinking is not really accurate. It's without system two thinking. Remember the system one, system two dichotomy we have in our brain? System one does things by intuition, by feel. We're not conscious of what system one is doing. Things just pop out of our mouth, and they sometimes surprise you yourself, right? You some, sometimes say something, you think, where did that come from? Has that ever happened to you or never? Or do you sometimes make a decision and you're thinking, why did I make that decision? Usually I'm so careful. Right? That's system one who's taking over sometimes. Maybe it's getting tired of system two being too slow, too analytical, too logical, and too careful. Sometimes system two is so slow. System one just gets tired of it, and then you do something on impulse. So I'm just saying that as an illustration of the difference between system one and system two. It doesn't mean that there are two separate parts of your brain, but functionally there are two separate parts of your brain. It doesn't mean that organically you have two different places we can label. But there's a part of your brain that is working mostly unconsciously that does things automatically because it's been trained by habit. The other part will think a long time and then decide and then do something. And in Taiwan, people tend to use which part to speak English? System one or system two? System two, mostly system two. And that's why people will say things like, how can you expect me to remember to add S to verbs in the third person singular? How can you expect me to remember the past tense? I don't have time. Students have told me that for decades. So they just give you the yuanxing constantly, right? Everybody following me? Yeah, I, I appreciate the nods. If you just nod, it's good enough. You know, your, your head doesn't really shake, but I can see from this distance. So if you're constantly relying on system two, everything is going to go too slow. And that's not good enough for language performance. You have to have system one trained so that without conscious thought, system one is mostly unconscious. It doesn't mean you're th not thinking. System one does think but it's been trained to do things automatically. You don't really feel it when it happens. It feels like there's no effort involved. It does take a lot of effort, but you're not feeling it because it's not conscious. So we have to switch this habit of when you're speaking English using careful, analytical, and very slow system two to system one where it pops out all by itself. And then you get it right because it's been trained correctly. 
So it's that part of the training that we're trying to do with this plan. Our goal is to automate these changes, things that you didn't do before. You might do if you thought long enough, but we don't have time to think long enough so they never get changed. That's the pattern I've observed over the years. So in my kind of work, what I'm doing is I'm trying to make students aware of the things that they should change to make their English easier for the listener, more Belgian. They become aware of them, but they don't use them. So it's this bridge from awareness and theory to practice that's been missing. And I'm, this is an effort now to see if this weekly plan and follow-up can help bridge your now conscious awareness and your theory over to actual practice, automation, and habit. That's the whole point. This is something like the answer I was trying to um, elicit from you. So that's all clear what we're trying to do. We need a weekly update, a progress report on how you're doing automating things one by one. Too many at once, your brain can't handle it. But if you focus on one or two a week, your brain can do it. You can just remind yourself, ah, 今年, uh, 这个礼拜的主题是什么, you can remind yourself and slowly, system one will get the idea. It will start doing it by itself if you repeat it often enough. So a weekly progress report on your pronunciation improvement plan. Tiwaihua, I've put up some new mini conversations. You can get to them through Freshman English or through the lab links on the home page. And that's for those of you who want short dialogues to practice spoken English with. You can use that for echo method practice and for automation practice because it's short, it's colloquial. It will have you just popping up with correct English sentences with the correct tense and the correct person, etc., without having to think if you practice them often enough. That's just one source and they're short and they're easy to use. So many conversations through Freshman English or the Freshman Lab links. Um, and very quickly, vowels and consonants, okay, chapter three, any problems? I'll officially ask you on Wednesday and I remember today that it's Monday. So uh, vowels and consonants, okay. Don't leave it off till the last minute. Your brain needs time to process it because if you do it earlier, your brain will be working on it subconsciously and you'll come up with more questions by the time um, it, you, it's, it's time for you to actually write the summary and then and your questions and hand it in. Okay, so vowels and consonants is okay, I'm going to assume. And I'm going to give you a web page assignment. I want you to read carefully web page number four because we've already covered ejectives and plosives and clicks now. Not thoroughly, that would be really difficult because especially with clicks there's so many variations. But so that you understand the airstream mechanism involved in each one and you hear each one so you recognize it when you hear it in speech. I haven't put radio links up but I plan to do that soon. There are already a lot of links on page four where you can hear naturally occurring ejectives, implosives, and clicks. A lot of them are really fun. For example, you can link to a YouTube click of The Gods Must Be Crazy and you will hear I think it's Ko, oh no, it's not Ko, it's Kong, I believe, language, uh, a click language being spoken by native speakers. At first I wondered if it was real because the movie was so funny and so silly. I wondered if the click languages were just made up, but they're, they're real. So you can listen to that. And there are a lot of other links as well. That's all I have to cover um, before the course. Anybody have any comments or questions? And I just want to ask you quickly about the dictation last Wednesday. Uh, do you think you learned something from it? Probably a lot of you made some systematic mistakes, like writing DA for DA, right? Probably a lot of you made mistakes like that. But do you think now that you're ready for another dictation of that type and you probably wouldn't make the same mistakes? Or are there still some things that you're not so clear about? I'll just read through the items on the dictation one more time and just think in your head how you would transcribe them and see if you have any questions, if there are any two, any two sounds, any pairs of sounds that you still don't distinguish well. So you don't have to write it down, I'm just repeating the quiz so you can, you can decide if there's something you need to review. One, ah, this is an, an ejective, ejective. Two, ga, voiced. voiced. Velar, initial stop, right? Okay. Ba. 
unaspirated is the important thing here. So it's unvoiced, unaspirated, initial, bilabial, stop. Okay, how about ta? Voiceless, aspirated, alveolar, initial stop. Okay, ah. It's an ejective. Place of articulation, feeler, and it's voiceless by implication. We just assume that. Initial stop. And the adjectives are pretty easy to recognize, aren't they? At least the way I read them. I read them pretty clearly. They're less clear sometimes if they're at the middle, in the middle, or at the end of a word, towards the end of a word. That was my experience with Georgian. I can't speak for other languages. At the beginning of the word, usually they are pretty strong and clear. In the middle or towards the end of the word, they're not always as strongly ejective. They're still ejectives, but it's usually not quite as obvious. And we have a similar situation with a different kind of stop in English. For example, at the beginning of a word, a voiceless aspirated stop in English is pretty strong. For example, take, take. Um, but if you put it in the middle or towards the end of a word, it's less aspirated. The aspiration is not as strong. It's not voiced. It's definitely not voiced. But it's less strong. And it's hard to give an example with T because that becomes a tap so often. Or say, let's say a K, or a K sound, or a K sound. So could, but vacation, vacation. It's still stressed. It's still aspirated. But it's not as strongly aspirated as could. Could, vacation, could, vacation. And if it's not stressed, it's even less aspirated. It's still voiceless, but it's not as strongly aspirated in the middle or towards the end of the word. But don't overdo it because, as I may have mentioned, a common pronunciation in Taiwan of stupid is stupid, stupid. It becomes voiced, and that's not right. So don't voice it. You can reduce the aspiration, but it does not become voiced. Not stupid. It's stupid, stupid. Okay. Um, that was for. Ah, uh, six, da. What is that? Voiceless, unaspirated, alveolar initial. And seven, ka. Voiceless, aspirated, alveolar initial. Eight, da. Voiced, unaspirated is assumed, alveolar initial. Okay, stop. And nine, ah. Go ahead. Okay, it's an alveolar ejective, initial stop. And ten, ba. Voiced, bilabial. Okay, initial stop. Very good. So I think this dictation is okay right now. There's no big problem. We will have another one on Wednesday. And this time it will include implosives. Let's go to the course. That's it. Unless we have any comments or questions. Anybody? Time to read. All right. Tell us where we're starting. And I saw some discussion on the pronunciation of a retinoid. And my conclusion is we're sticking with a retinoid. However, they say one of the pronunciations is a retinoid. Honestly, in my memory, that's the only way I've ever heard it pronounced in videos and in lectures that I've heard that talk about the arytenoid cartilages. So we're going to stick with that. If you want to adopt a different one, that's, you, that's your choice. OK? Let's go. Page 149, second paragraph. Amy, murmured sounds occur in English in the pronunciation of h in between vowels, as in ahead and behind. OK, be careful with that. Don't, I know you wanted to emphasize it so everyone could hear it, but don't make it fricative, because h is not fricative. If we have a fricative, then we have frication. But we don't really have that with huh. All we have is breathing. All we have is breathing. Okay, like you're sleeping and breathing through your mouth. And not breathing too hard. It's just not What is How do we describe that? It's an X. That's right. And it is what? A what kind? A voiceless. First of all, it's voiceless. Velar. Fricative is h. So be, be very careful if you're just reading the sound h or if you're reading it in a word 
It often happens among some Taiwanese speakers that they say heart, he, heart, her. Don't do that. It's just heart and her. Okay, I know you're trying to be clear, but you need to be careful so it doesn't become something else. Go ahead. And most of the speakers of English, we have been able to observe. Can you make that more connected? Because that's all part of the same clause. And most of the English of speaker. Uh, and most of the speakers of English, we have been able to observe. All right, we, it makes sense to pause there, but we cannot pause too long because this is all part of a, a, a dependent clause. 这是一个从属词句里面的，其实必须要连在一起的。Often when we have of, it's a, although it's a preposition, we often don't pause before it because. 因为前面后面的那那几个 constituent 那些成分是关系太密切了 ，so if we pause, it sounds like we've got two different clauses. I want you to listen to these two for contrast. Here's the first one. In most of the speakers of English, we have been able to observe. Actually, that makes grammatical sense, but it's not what we want. What we're, we're trying to say here. What are we trying to say? We've actually omitted a word. What word have we omitted? Who or that, which, 都可以都通 And I have told you that whenever you omit a word like this, you need to pause. However, 要看情况 Because this is a 从属子句 it cannot be too slow and too carefully phrased because we will then get the impression that we've got two clauses. So, in most of the speakers of English, we have been able to observe that. 可能是这个意思 right? We could make it into that meaning, but is that what we mean here? No. So for that reason, we have to 弥补一下这个问题 and we have to sort of speed it up to make it clear that we don't want to the listener to think it's two clauses, but we want to keep this one clause together. So I would read it like this: In most of the speakers of English, we have been able to observe. So we have no continuation rise until observe. Otherwise, your listener may get confused. Or they may think you're confused. We call that garden pathing. We think it's going this way, but suddenly the sentence shows us it has a different structure, a different grammatical structure. So this is an important point. I mean, I'm not picking on one person. I'm showing. I'm just pointing out something you need to watch out for. You need to keep a dependent clause together when you're reading. One more time. In most of the speakers of English, we have been able to observe. Perfectly clear now, right? Go. The h in the these words is the made. Right. Not h. It's h. Yeah. Relax your tongue, because if you're going h again, it'll become velar. So, the h is this word. What's more? The h. And you're still you're still making it velar. Yeah. Right. The h in these words is made with the vocal folds slightly apart along these lo- entire length. Here you can pause again、uh, a little bit. Slightly apart. Pause. Along here is a jeshi, so that's not of. Slightly apart along the their le- entire length. Length. Length.、Good. But still continuing to vibrate as if they were waving in the breeze. All right. So I've been picking on phrasing here. Let's make sure we got the meaning. He's saying that in his observation, 根据他自己的观察 and that's the way I have to preface a lot of things I say. 根据我的观察 because maybe I have blind spots and I've only been watching one thing but missing another. 故此失彼 But he's saying in his observation. Although he is theoretically voiceless or voiced, voiceless, right? But、uh, it's made with the vocal folds slightly apart along their entire length, but still continuing to vibrate. If it is between what two voiced sounds, vowels. So if you put a he between two vowels, the he is probably going to be partially voiced, right? So it's. They're continuing to vibrate the vocal folds as though they were waving in the breeze. So we haven't completely opened the vocal folds to make an open glottis. They're partly open, and we're still getting some voicing due to assimilation from the vowels around it. So instead of, we're getting something like, huh, like a head, a head, a head, a head. Okay. The term voiced H is something used for this is, sound. Is 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 the voice. The term "voiced H" is sometimes used for this sound, but it is somewhat confusing as there is cent- certainly no voicing in the usual sense. All right,、um, let's watch intonation here.、Uh, 
Uh, I'll be especially picky with Amy since she's almost native-like in her English. The term voiced H is sometimes used for this sound. The term voiced H is sometimes used for this sound. The term voiced H is sometimes used for this sound. Everyone? The term voiced H is sometimes used for this sound. This 不要那么重. That's a habit you guys are going to have to work on. This, 不要看到 this, 就直接放重音. Anyway, this, 经常是一个虚词. Used for this sound, it just sounds confusing. We don't know why you're stressing this. And the listener, even though it may be subconscious, they're going to be confusing. Why did they stress this? We really pay attention to stress in English. And you can put this in your notes if you were not really strongly aware of it before. Consciously or unconsciously, there are things that you especially watch out for as a listener of a language that you know, a native speaker especially. And one of those in English is stress. It's hugely, hugely, hugely important. Lexical stress is something like Chinese tone. Chinese, you're always watching out for tone to make sure you've got the right meaning of the syllable. We're watching out for stress so that we don't understand aerobic when this person meant to say Arabic. Right. If they get the, the stress wrong, we're going to misunderstand. That's lexical. But intonational, we're always watching for intonational stress so we know what are the content words as opposed to function words and what is important to the speaker that we have to watch out for, especially in order to react quickly. Because when we're communicating, we always need to react quickly. That means we're collecting clues as we go along to make sure that we react in time and we react correctly. And stress is one of the biggest, most important cues for an English speaker. We're always watching for that. As soon as somebody stresses something that we think, it's not that important, why did they stress that? You're throwing the listener off. To throw them off means confusing them. That means they're now trying to concentrate on something that's not important when they should be concentrating on these stressed elements that tell them what your point is and what is important to you and what is therefore important to the listener. So be really careful about putting the stress on the wrong word. I get the feeling this is something, again, that you were not taught previously very much. Teachers just let it by. But if you put the stress in the wrong place when you're speaking, probably nobody ever corrected you or they very seldom corrected you. Or if they did, they didn't tell you the reason. But now you know you're really confusing your listener. Even if the listener doesn't realize why it was so important, we do it we do it based on what, what System 1 is doing. Okay, System 1 is running the show here mainly. So, in this sentence, the term voiced H is sometimes used for this sound. Okay, is sometimes used for this sound, not used for this sound. Um, okay? The term murmured H is preferable. Okay, preferable or preferable? I say preferable. Preferable is not wrong. Okay? The symbol for this sound is... <laughs> oh, the symbol for this sound is... H with a hook. H with a hook. Okay. All right. So please put that in your notes, Amy, because you stress this a lot. Um, and that's often something we don't want to stress. Sometimes we do stress it. When do we stress this? In contrast. That's right. Exactly. Or this. I want this one. In that case, you're going to stress it. When you're pointing to something, that means it's important. So we stress it based on it's important. If we're pointing to it, that means this one and not another one. Mm, okay, so let's make sure we understand. We sometimes call this sound of H between two vowels a voiced H. But he said it's not a normal kind of voicing like M or G. It's not quite voiced in that sense. But we do have some kind of voicing, and we're going to call it murmur. And you can see that in the lower left-hand corner. It's a murmured H. We're learning now about murmurs or breathy voice as well. We can call it either one. They're the same thing. And we have a special symbol for it. It's H with that little hook on it pointing to the right. Okay, any questions? Let's go on. Bella, learn to distinguish between the murmur sound and H. What's the D? Murmured sound. Murmured sound. Uh -huh. As in, uh, 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 uh. This one is not now. It's uh, 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 uh. Uh -huh. uh. Mm -hmm. As in aha. Okay, not in. 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 Good. Aha. 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 Mine is pretty voiceless. Aha. I can make it more voiced, but I separate them so much. Aha. Sounds pretty voiceless to me. How about you? 
Aha, aha. I'm slowing down because I'm surprised and I want a long dramatic reaction. Aha. But in ahead, I probably voiced it more. It's shorter. If you have too much time, you have time to devoice it. You have time to open up your vocal folds and make it voiceless again. So aha for me, aha, I don't have much voicing. Ahead, I do have more. Okay? And the voice does sound as it uh, us at the beginning of as. an as. Mm -hmm. Yeah, train yourselves. Us is not wrong, but you've all learned us as the normal pronunciation for as. The citation pronunciation is as with a Z. Everyone, as. And when you read an H once more, everybody, just breathe. Listen. No, you're doing it. You didn't listen. Okay? Just like. Right? Everyone? Good. Okay. Um, Go as at the beginning of an English word such as heart, Good. the murmured sound is like a sigh produced while breathing heavily. Good. And sigh, she had a nice pause after it because what's omitted here? Uh, which is? Which is, right, keep going. Uh, take a deep breath. Not dip. Deep. Right. Take a deep breath and see how long you can make and first. see how long. And, and see how, how long. long. Watch the stress here. Not see how long. And see how long. And see how long you can make first ha. And huh. then ha. Uh, there's huh. no other. Huh. 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 And then huh. Try it again. Uh, huh. No, you're putting velar friction in there. Uh, no, huh. I think a lot of you do that because basically the h huh sound in in Mandarin, even though you don't usually use it in Taiwan Mandarin, ta jiben sang underlyingly it's a velar fricative. So how you don't say how you say how. velar fricative. Voiceless velar fricative. So don't carry that over into English because the English H is not velar. It absolutely is not velar. Unless there's a velar sound after it, we may make it more velar. But 基本上底层是根本没有固定的发音位置. It completely depends on the sound that comes after it. It's totally flexible. It just depends on what comes after. So 不管 if it's voiceless or, or voiced. And by the way, um, when do you use whether or even he doesn't want to go, even if he doesn't want to go, this don't Even you don't want to go, you have to go. It should be even if. I don't care he want he doesn't want to go. It should be I don't care whether whether or not he wants to go. All right, that just reminded me of that while I was doing this. So for H, Buguan is a voiceless, has a voiced. Don't make it velar. So voiceless everybody again, just breathing. Don't don't tense your tongue. Don't make it very jin. Everybody just your whole fine chi guan fang song. There, good. Good. Now let's just voice it a little bit, but don't get all tense. Good. Now it sounds right. Alright, I'm being picky about little things. And you need to have the right foundation, otherwise you're going to end up in the wrong place. Go on. Um, in, uh, in the voice that sound, Good. the air from the lungs escapes very rapidly so that this sound mm -hmm. cannot, mm -hmm. so that this sound... You may notice everybody's doing this. Go on. So that th the sound Good. cannot be prolonged to any great extent. All right, everybody understands this. How long can you make an H sound last, a voiceless H? Try. Take a deep breath and then try to make an H as long as you can. I'm done. If you if you are very careful about it and you're paying attention, like if you're swimming and you're controlling your breathing, you can make it longer. But you're going to run out quickly with a normal H because so much air comes out for this voiceless H. You're just breathing. The air is going to come out really fast, and you will exhaust your air supply pretty quickly. Go on. But you can make the murmur sound huh, that's much longer. All right, you're going. But you can make. But you can make the. Murmured, that's where stress is. Zhongdian is murmured. But you can make the, everyone? Continue. Murmured sound. Huh. All right, try it again. Um, but you can make the mm. murmured. You take all the, but you can make. 
but you can make the murmured sound <laughs> huh, that's much longer. Right. As the flow of air from the lungs is slowed down by the vibrating vocal folds. Good. Note that mm -hmm. huh can be said on a range of different pitches. Mm -hmm. Said. Said. Range. Range. It's just like change, everybody. Range. Range. <laughs> Good. And also, um, you can make huh longer because the air is slowed down by the vibrating. Everyone vibrating. Mm -hmm. um, for range, make sure that you slow down a bit. Don't say, can be said on a range of. The vowel will come out wrong because A is long in the first place. It's also a content word. So please slow down when you come to A, especially before nasal. Can be said, pause, on a range, it's an important word, on a range of different pitches. Everyone? On a, we're on the last two lines of the paragraph. On a range of different pitches. Very good. Um, the other thing is the content. So we tried huh, we run out pretty of breath pretty fast. Let's try huh, a voiced one. See if you can make it longer or if it naturally seems to last longer. Voice it. Uh. You should find it can last quite a bit longer because, why? Can you explain it? Explain it physiologically. The flow from the lungs is slowed down by the vibrating vocal. All right, and can you go into more detail about the vibration of the vocal folds? What do we have going on physiologically? Because when we are vibrating, the glottis is smaller. It's smaller, right? The glottis is smaller and it's opening and closing. That slows down the air. So the opening, the glottis is smaller. And the vibrating is slowing down the progression of the air. It's a smaller opening. Let's go on. And it says that huh can be said on a range of different pitches. And we know that because it's voiced. It's a continuant. So uh, 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 everything is fine. Okay. Carol, mm -hmm. now say her before a vowel. When you say ha, ha. when you say ha, All right. put more put more voicing in so ha. it sounds, yeah. sounds like you're in a cheap one again, Ha, ha. Mm -hmm. ha. Mm -hmm. You'll probably find that the breathiness extends into the vowel. Okay, probably. Actually, native speakers do say probably, but when we're reading, let's say probably. Probably. Good. And then the breathiness is going to extend into the vowel. And you'll find that because we have different markings for a breathy consonant and a breathy vowel. We have different markings. And in theory, you should be able to keep them separate, but usually they blend into each other. So if we have a, a breathy H, we're going to hear breathiness in the ah uh, as well. So ha, ha, ha. Ah, the a breathiness to change. Okay, let's go on. But try to make only the first part of the syllable breathy and produce regular voicing at the end. All right, now we're going to try to cut them into pieces so we don't have breathiness with the ah as a kind of training. So make a breathy H and then a regular ah with no breathiness. Try. Ha, ha, ha. You have to quickly stop the breathiness before the vowel. It takes some practice. Let's go on. Finally, try to produce the sequence Ha, at, after a stop consonant. After a fuhutsu. After, after a stop consonant. Good. So, for example, let's try a D. Da, da, da. And this is a typical Indian sound. In the languages of India, you're going to find this really commonly. Go on. Murmured stops of this kind. Murmured stops of this kind. Murmured stop of this kind. Oh, yes. Oh. Murmured stops of this kind mm -hmm. occur in Hindi in, and not in in, in uh -huh. occur in occur in Hindi Good. and in many other languages spoken in many India. Many other languages. In many other languages spoken in India. Good. In India. In India. Very good. In India. Good. Okay. These sounds will be discussed more fully in the next section, but we can know here okay. that stop it stops, but but mm -hmm. but. But we can note here that in murmured stops. But we can note here that. 
but we can know here that mm -hmm. in murmur stops, the in murmur, murmur stops. In murmur stops. In, in murmur stops. In murmur stops. You got D. I'm getting really picky, getting okay. every detail. In murmured stops. In murmured stop. Very good. The murmur occurs only during the release of the stop. 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 Okay. There must be a comparatively high rate of flow of air out of the lungs to produce murmur, and this cannot be ha this cannot happen during the stop closure. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So it's kind of hard to turn off the murmur or breathiness. They're the same thing, just before the vowel. You can do it, but it's a little hard to do. Let's go on. Vivian, it is fairly easy to produce a required flow flow rate for. Oh. Flow. Mm -hmm. Flow rate for murmur during a vowel. Some languages contrast plain and murmured vowels. Table 6.5 shows a set of words in Gujarati. Good. Another, language, uh, another language spoken in India. In India. In India. Okay, make sure that everybody use linking to get the right nasal, especially before. Uh, well, not especially. If you're using linking, it's because the next sound is usually an, uh, a vowel. So, in India, in India. And then you want to say in India or something like that. So, in India, in India. Good? Murmured sounds are indicated. Murmured sounds are. Murmured sounds are indicated by placing two dots be below the symbol. All right. Here we've got a new symbol. Murmured sounds. But if it's a murmured sound, we put two dots under the symbol, and that shows it's murmured or breathy. Go on. In Gujarati. In, 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 uh -huh. in Gujarati. In Gujarati. The, in Gujarati, mm -hmm. the contrast between murmured or breathy voice sounds. Breathy. Breathy. Breathy voice sounds. Breathy voice sounds. Breathy voice sounds mm -hmm. and regular. Model voice. Mo model. Uh, mm -hmm. It's okay. Mm. Model's voice can occur in both consonants and vowels. In the first row. In the first row. In the first row, you can hear three-way contrast. Contrast. Remember contrast. the continuation lines. Yeah. Contrast mm -hmm. between a murmured between vowel. Between na na na. Between. between between a murmured vowel, can you link it? Mm. Between Be a between a right. murmured vowel, a murmured release of a stop of a of a of a stop, right. and a word that has only modal voice. All right, this is sort of the end, pretty much the end for now of breathy murmured sounds. We're going to listen to the files, and. Take note of the vocabulary and the symbols introduced here. First of all, modal, it looks like a fancy technical word, but what does it mean? What does modal mean? It's really easy and you're going to go, ah, when you hear. It's just plain voicing. The voicing is called modal, modal voicing. That means it's not breathy, it's not, uh, it's not creaky, it's not anything special, it's just very plain voicing. Han Chunjung, the voicing is called modal voicing. And we've also learned the new symbol, which is two dots below the symbol. And, and we've got this table here where we have a word for outside. You see on table 6.5, let's listen. Here we go. I want you to listen carefully. Listen for the breathiness or the murmur in the vowel. So you can see the two dots are under the vowel. Ah. Listen. Mar, 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 mar. That sounds like an implosive B to me. It's strongly voiced, so it may not be, but it sounds awfully implosive. But let's focus on the vowel. Mar, 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 mar. Okay. Let's listen to. Another word that has breathiness on the what? The breathiness is not on the vowel, but it's on the initial stop. Let's listen to that. Var. 
Bar. Bar. They're putting the breathiness on the consonant. It's really hard to tell. It's really hard to tell. So if you can't tell, it's okay. But Bar. Lis listen to these on your own time because the links are all on page four, chapter six links. Just go to um, the very top link where it says Latifoga's own site. And then you'll find a list of um, a list of links with the sounds. Or you can use the CD-ROM with your book. Either one is fine. So let's listen to the third one, which has neither breathiness on neither the consonant nor the vowel. Ba. 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 That one sounds implosive to me. All of these sound implosive. Okay, let's let's just listen to the three. Bar. 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 First one. Bar. Okay, that one you can hear quite a difference. Bar. Bar. They stop it before the vowel. And then finally, again. Ba. 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 Let's listen to the second row. You were going to hear it on e, eh, first with breathiness on the vowel and then without. Mel. Listen. Mel. 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 And then we'll listen to the same syllable without breathiness on the vowel. Mel. Okay, that time it was fairly clear. Contrast. Mel. 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 That's the plain one. All right, listen to these on your own time. And get your ears accustomed to the new sounds that we're learning. So with this, we're to the end of breathiness or murmured sounds. Then remember, they mean the same thing. And then you've got the illustration in the lower left-hand corner of the pictures on page 148. So the vocal folds are partly open. We have some degree of voicing with a lot of wind coming through at the same time. We're going on now to creaky voice, which you're all familiar with. And where do we have creaky voice in Mandarin again? Where do we have creaky voice in Mandarin? Everybody remember? We discussed it last semester. Anybody remember? You have it all the time, every day. Maybe about a quarter of the syllables that you pronounce are in creaky voice. Nobody remembers. How do you say I? Say it a few times. What do you discover? <coughs> do you notice anything? I can hear it here. <laughs> what do you observe about it? Creaky voice, right? And it's due to what? Is it due to the wuh sound or the o sound? No, it's due to the to the tone, to the third tone. Third tone in Mandarin is creaky voice. So my experience is that my students are experts in creaky voice. You're very good at it because you do it all the time, every day. So once you realize that what you're doing is creaky voice, then you get very good at recognizing it and producing it in other contexts as well because you've got it in Mandarin. Anything from our native language, as long as we know what it is, we're usually pretty good at because our ears are already listening to it automatically. Just like for tone, you're very good at tone. If you're learning a new tone language, you will pay special attention to tone. You're usually very good at it. You'll be much better than, in general, than and speakers of non-tone languages. So, creaky voice. Let's go. Sylvie, in creaky voice, which is... Okay, don't say voice. 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 Yeah, make the all really short. Everyone, voice. 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 Not voice, it's voice. voice. Voiced. 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 Voiceless. Voiceless. Unvoiced. Unvoiced. Voicelessness. Voiceless. Voice. voice. Good. In creaky voice, which is the other stage of the goddess illustrated in figure 6.6? .6? Okay, I'm going to be picky. So first of all, which is not stressed? And I don't say hu. Hu is not wrong. Many people do say hu. I don't. So which is the, where is our word that, that uh, gives us contrast here in this, in this 
uh, phrase? Not other. Other, yeah, yeah, to other. So other is contrastive. So that's what we're going to stress. Um, glottis is also very important, and I have a tap here. I don't say glottis, I say glottis. So this is how I would read it. In creaky voice, which, and voice is repeated, that's why I don't stress it, otherwise it would be stressed. In creaky voice, which is the other state of the glottis illustrated in figure 6.6, .6, tonic stress is on the second six, and glottis is also stressed because it's important. In creaky voice, which is the other state of the glottis illustrated, which is which is uh, of the glottis illustrated in figure 6.6. .6. Can you try that? In creaky voice. Cre not creaky. Everyone creak. Okay, and this is again a little off, off topic, but we sometimes do make it into crick. There are a few words where e becomes it in English, but only due to dialect or colloquial usage. One I may have mentioned before is creatures, creatures, which means? What does creatures mean? Sheng Wu is wrong. Why is it not Sheng Wu? Does the dictionary say that? Anybody have a dictionary you can check? If they do, it's misleading you. It's not Sheng Wu. Because are flowers and vegetables creatures? No. Amy? Animals? Yes. Creatures only includes animals. So if your dictionary says Sheng Wu, please put that in your, please put that in your notes. Um, write to the publisher. <laughs> Because it does not include plants. Creatures in English is only animals, only animals, including humans, but not plants. All right, so creatures, we have a colloquial dialect word for creatures, namely critters, C-R-I-T-T-E-R-S. Oh, look at that cute little critter. And critter is a dialect form of creature that we use as an endearing kind of uh, term. A term of endearment. say, Oh, look at all those critters. So creature, critter, and creek is another word that we do this with sometimes for a certain meaning of creek. Creek is uh, but we sometimes say, I have a crick in my back. You heard that, Amy? What's it mean? It's a real tough one to translate, but the situation happens often enough anywhere in the world. I have a creek in my back. <laughs> yeah, 三道腰, that's a good translation. Well, I have a creek in my back. You can say creek, but we usually use the dialect, humorous, kind of humorous term, creek. I have a creek in my back. All right, so creek, creek, creature, critter. In both cases, they're dialect. So, when you read the word in a formal context, you still need the full E sound in creaky voice. And that was the bell, so we'll finish after break. Thank you. In the past, we often had students perform skits and things like from or audio files. We did that for fine sushi, but we found that we just don't have time for that. And that's the kind of thing I do in Dai Yingwen and in Yingting. So it has turned out that what is our main fa yin shi in this class? Reading, and you get picked on and picked on and picked on, and then I guess eventually get used to it. But that's the way you improve, because those are things mainly you were probably not aware of before. You're doing things subconsciously out of habit, and you think they're okay because nobody ever told you otherwise before, but now we're picking and picking. It's not just for you, although, I'm trying to help you improve. But it's for you to also to understand what's going on in English better, which I have learned through a process of hearing students do things often incorrectly, according to the way I speak, compared to the way I speak anyway. So you become, number one, first of all, it helps you improve. Two, you become more aware of these things. And three, in addition to being more aware of the things I tell you about, you become more sensitive, what? To everything. Because you get picked on so much, and we're looking at such tiny things, in theory they're tiny, but for a listener they're not tiny. Because they affect the whole emotional state, the whole understanding, the whole interaction will depend on a lot of these details that you either put in or fail to put in or you put in wrong. It really, they're not as tiny as they seem when we're picking on them in class. 
But helping you improve, helping you become more aware of these things. And third, you become sensitive in general, not just to the things I tell you about, but you're going to start noticing everything in any kind of language at all and things that are non-linguistic as well. Sounds around the house, you will start noticing. And one of the funny things that struck me, and partly it's due to musical and also to phonetic training, was I have a zither in my bedroom. I have it. And when I sneezed, I had a cold. I sneezed really loud, and the guzheng started vibrating. So, hachu! <laughs> and things like that are really fun when you understand why it happens. So it's like I have a bunch of musical instruments in the house. You've got this living environment of you that's going with, around you that's in, reacting to you as you make sounds yourself. And that wasn't even a linguistic sound. That was a sneeze. But obviously, a sneeze has a lot of different, what? Frequencies, yeah. And many of them cause a, reson a resonance in the strings of the Bijeng in the same room, even though it was in a case. Sympathetic vibration. So that's just an example. You start to become sensitive to everything around you, especially in language, but even in non-linguistic things, you start to view them and analyze them in acoustic terms and hear what's going on more, which means, actually, you can live a fuller life. Because do you sometimes get bored? Do you sometimes get bored? I think it's mainly young people. You don't. Why, don't you, why do you not get bored? Um, I don't know. I just feel that there are so many things to do. So. That's the point I'm working up to. Sometimes we fail to change activities. We stick to one thing too, t uh, too long, like staring at the computer too long. That's probably what a lot of us do, right? Or at our phones or whatever it is. But if you can just pull yourself away from whatever is getting a little dull, you will find there are just so many things in the world to appreciate just by observing them and experiencing them. Because life is all about little things. Don't ever think that you're waiting up for this time in your life when you're going to meet the love of your life and you'll be happy forever. And you start a family, I have a wonderful house and a great car and some beautiful kids. Don't be waiting for that time because life is going on in the meantime. Every little, every little thing and every second of life that you're living is the life that you think you're waiting for. It's right now. It's very hard to live in the present. But if you are sensitized to more things in your environment, Different teachers will help you become sensitive to different things. In your literature classes, now you're becoming more sensitive to, for example, metaphors or books, discussions of literary history, of history in general, of all kinds of things. You get some, something from all of your classes. From your math classes, you start seeing numbers in your environment. You find that actually everything can be described in a number that happens. It's pretty hard to do, but it could be in theory. So, Math training will give you that feeling that actually the world is made up of numbers. Every kind of training makes you a little more sensitive to something else in the world, which helps you live a fuller life. And that's the big difference, I think, between an educated person and a, a well-educated person and a less educated person. A less educated person probably needs something like Disneyland to really give them a stimula uh, the stimulation they want. rides in an amusement park or maybe get drunk in a crazy party or something like that. But the more educated you are, the more you can get all the stimulation you need just from your environment, right? So the third point is overall sensitivity. That leads to greater understanding of things around you. You can suddenly identify things, say, oh, that's because, and you actually have a much richer life. All right. So it started out as discussion of what is the fine nigga xi zuo de bu fen. And that is the corrections while we're reading because that at least is relating to the content that we're trying to learn at the same time. All right, we're going to continue talking about creaky voice, which we've discovered all of us do regularly when we speak Mandarin. Let's go. Sylvie, in creaky voice, which is the other stage of a goddess illustrated in figure 6.6, .6, the arytenoid cartilage Cartilages. Cartil are listen. Cartilages. Cartilages mm -hmm. 
are tightly together. Tightly, 不要 tightly, it's tightly. Tightly together,、mm -hmm. so that the together. together, so that the vocal folds can vibrate only at the anterior end, the small opening at the top of a photograph. Good at the at the top. Okay, and okay. small. Small. Look at my mouth. Small. Small. Not small. 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 I know we use this symbol because the 几乎是没有 rounding， 因为 l 的关系 ，and As we noticed last semester, as I posted last semester, I distinguish between between all and all. 我这两个我有区别，我是很少数的。So that may be one reason that I want less rounding, but other native speakers do the same thing. The first one is all, and the second one is all. For me, I don't need you to learn that one. 因为那是我个人，我出生长大的那个环境里面，刚好我们会区别这两个。Not everybody from Minnesota does. Wisconsin, that area, some people do, but many don't. But what I'm saying is, I have more rounding with all. But with all, just a plus l or ll, I have very very little rounding. So watch all, all. and that makes it sound native-like to me. It's not just me; it's American, general American. So all, all. yeah, don't bother rounding it. All, all. 先发呆 all. all, 那就好了 Okay. Um, that was all, and no, that's not all. There's more.、Uh, small, small. Everybody's small. Small. Yeah, don't try to round it too much. It'll come out more British, which is not bad. That's good for Jerome. Small, small, small is British. American is small.、Mm, anterior, at the anterior end. Everyone, at the. Watch the stop. It stops. At the anterior end. All right. Don't make it syllable timed. We want stress timing. At the has to be fast. Those are function words. At the anterior end. At the anterior end. Okay. And I link anterior end. Anterior end. You might end some wing kai to. Another thing is tightly. Remember we talked about Canadian raising last semester. 还记得吗？那 tightly 就是个例子。Let's just use the adjective form tight and compare it to. Tied. This one has a very obvious comparison. This one is tight, and this one is tied. Or we could also use this spelling and meaning, the same thing. So because this is voiceless at the end, we have raising. It's not I. It's a. Are you one tight? Tight. 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 Tightly. It's very natural. You don't have to do anything strange. Tight, no, just a tight, tight, a, 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 a. Face on a zhu ran. Once more, tight. Tight. Tied. Tied. It's longer and it's i. It's not i, i. Once more, tight. Tight. Tied. Tied. Tightly. Tightly. We don't have tidly, but you could make it up. All right.、Mm. Okay. So let's look at the state of the glottis illustrated in 6.6 on the lower right hand. Corner, and you'll see that the vocal folds are tightly together, or they open and apart. They're tightly together, except there is a little opening where, at the top or bottom of the picture, at the top. And the top of the picture is what? Is it the front or the back? It's the front. So, in the back, the arytenoid cartilages. They're keeping the vocal folds tightly together, but at the at the top, which is the front. 还是有个小洞洞 ，and we're going to vibrate that when we make a creaky sound. So、uh, it's that front part that's partially open, and then we're going to creak,、uh, and that's what's going on in the glottis. Okay, let's continue. Note that the vocal folds appear to be much shorter in this photograph. This is partly because the Posterior portion at the bottom of a photograph is not visible when the arytenoid cartilages are pulled together. Good. Look back at the picture. It's all dark down there. Because in the lens, the arytenoid cartilages are being linked together. The lens is very dark. It's not visible. 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 可是另外一个原因是那个 arytenoid cartilage cartilages 并拢的时候，下面就
不会显示成白色，就变黑黑的。All right. One. But it is also the case that in creaky in creaky voice,、okay. the votes are not stretched from front to back as they are on higher pitches. It is not possible to make accurate measurements of the length of the vibrating votes in this foot length. <coughs> Lengths、Good. of the vibrating folds in these photographs, as the goddess is at varying distances from the camera, but this probably accounts for. Not but this, but this. But this、mm -hmm. probably accounts for only a small. Not only, only. Only. O 的 O only. Only. Yeah, you have kind of an O sound to your O, which is more British. So O O O 的 only. O only. Right. Only a small proportion. Small, small, right? Small proportion Pro of proportion. Propor proportion. Por are proportion. Proportion. That's better. Of the variation in length apparent in the photographs. Now he's trying to explain why it looks so much shorter. Partly it's because he takes this photo of the distance. 距离跟其他的有点不一样，可能比较近还是比较远，可能比较远一点，所以显示比较小一点。嗯、uh, ，Another reason is because the retinoid cartilages are in the shadow; they're dark, we can't see them very clearly.、Um, but those are not the only reasons. There's another reason. It's because when we are making such a low, low-pitched sound, and creaks are very, very low, 它们是低到。个别的 pulses 都数得出来，呃，可以去数。If we made a recording of it, we could probably count them just with our ear. We wouldn't have to use a computer program to do it. Being so low, the vocal folds are not being stretched like they are in this one, where they are being voiced. Upper left-hand corner 看起来比较长，当然是那个距离啊，排的那个距离应该比较近。可是同时。因为是 voiced, they are being tensed, 就是很紧绷，所以会拉长。So ah,、uh, the higher we go, the longer they're going to be stretched. 这一点很重要 ，make sure you understand. Pitch 越高，它就会撑得越长，越紧。Just like with a rubber band, if you take a 橡皮筋 and then it's very loose, and then you strum it, it'll go dong 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 dong. But then you stretch it like this. We'll put it on a nail here and hold it here, and he'll strum with his hand. It'll go, dong, 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 right? Because it's being stretched long, it's being made thinner and tighter, more tense, and that's what's happening with the vocal folds. So for for a creaky voice, what is the state of the vocal folds? Are they being stretched long, thin, and tight, or are they shorter and looser? They're shorter and looser, and that's another reason why they look smaller. There are many reasons. 比例是本来就不一样了 but still. That's only part of the reason. Let's go on. Creaky voice is a very low pitch sound that occurs at the end of falling intonation. At the what? At the what? At the end. Right. At the end of falling intonation. Fall. Fall. Falling. 对，跟 small 一样，已经出现三次 ，so you can put this in your notes. Falling. Falling intonations for, for some speakers of English. Good. Some 中音放对了 ，but, um.、Mm, It's not intonations. It's in what? T. We need a schwa there. Intonations.、Okay. And another one is that occurs. We need a tap there for American. Everyone, that occurs. that occurs. Instead of saying that occurs, we'll say that occurs. We're gonna link it with a tap. That occurs. Once more, that occurs. That occurs. Good. You can probably learn. Probably. Probably. Everyone, probably. Please be careful when you're reading from a text. Probably we do use in conversation, but probably. You can probably learn to produce it by singing the lowest note that you can, and then trying to go even lower. Even your n. Even lower. Right. Creaky voice sounds may also be called. Also. Also. Same thing again. Also be called. Laryngealized. Very good. Okay, laryngealized. Laryngealized. Larynx is ho. Ah,、uh, 它就喉化了 Laryngealized. Laryngealized. Everyone, laryngealized. 
So we have two names for the lower left-hand picture on 148. What kind of vowels, what kind of sounds do we find in Gujarati? And by the way, 要留意这些语言的名称因为小考的时候会考哪一个语言有哪一种英文特色所以古之拉的要留意因为考试小考会出现 Alright, I don't want you to spay a lot of meaningless information but it's good to know a representative language that has, for example, murmured or breathy sounds So, I just gave you the answer For the picture in the lower left hand corner on 148 we have two names for that kind of sound They are either called breathy sounds or murmured sounds. Now we also have two terms for the sound that we learned right after the breathy sounds, namely creaky voice and they, the sounds are also what? Called laryngealized. Creaky voice laryngealized. Because we're making the vocal folds very stiff, got a little hole towards the top, a little opening, and they're very tense, creating a very low-pitched creak. All right. This paragraph clear? We're going to talk about some languages that have creaky or laryngealized sounds. Next. Wendy, in some languages, laryngealization is... Laryngealization is a laryngealization. In American, we usually say laryngealization. Laryngealization is used to distinguish one to, to what? Distinguish. Mm -hmm. Distinguish one sound from another. Not sound. Sound. Right. Sound from mm -hmm. another. Mm -hmm. How sad and many other Chadic in languages of northern Nigeria. Of what? Northern. Huh? <laughs> northern. That's better. Northern Langa R. The T H plus the two R's. Northern. northern. Not Noah. You sound like you're from New York. <laughs> northern. Not New York, all right, New York. Northern, and we live in northern Taiwan. We need that word. Northern, again? Northern. Mm -hmm. Northern. Make the second R more clear. Northern. Not northern. 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 There we go, everyone. Northern. Northern. Okay, I'm teaching you one dialect. I want you to learn one dialect consistently. It's to make you more sensitive and aware of what you're doing. I want you to be consistent with this for this class. If you want to do another dialect on your own, that's fine. But learn this dialect consistently for this class. All right, Northern. Northern Nigeria. Northern. Northern. That's pretty good. Nigeria distinct. Nigeria. Nigeria. Right? Nigeria distinguish between two pal palatal expressions. Two what? Two palatal? Approximants. That's better. One has regular voicing, Rather than the hmm? rather? rather like the English sound at the beginning of yacht. Very good, everyone. Yacht. 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 Okay. So the point is, he wants you to make a yes sound. We know that that's a palatal. It's a uh, the only palatal sound that we have. It's a palatal approximant. Go ahead. At the beginning of yacht, and the other has creaky voice. The IPA, the, the, the IPA diacritic, diet. diacritic, right? Is the IPA diacritic to indicate creaky voice is a tilde, T I L D E. We've learned that we've used this before for what? Nasalization, but where do we put it for nasalization? Above the symbol, and we also put it in the middle of a symbol for what? Dark L, very good. So it goes right in the middle of the L for velarization in that case. So above the symbol, nasalization. In the middle, velarization. But for velarization, we can use a different symbol. Um, let's look here, velarization. Can you find velarization in your list? It's in the inside front cover, second column in the middle. What is that symbol? It's in the middle column, and about the middle of the column, inside front cover. What is the symbol for velarized? Okay, it's, it's a small gamma. We call that gamma, and it's a r sound. R, r, r. That's a voiced velar fricative. So we have a symbol for a voiced velarized 
Secondary articulation, remember secondary articulation. Um, here, here though, uh, we're talking about a tilde above the symbol, it's nasal, in the middle of the symbol, it's velarized, but we've got another velarization symbol that I wanted to point out. And then below the symbol, it is creaky voice or laryngealized. Either one is fine, okay? Go. Place down the symbol. How's that or the uh, orthography? Mm -hmm. Where's the stress? You've got the right stress, right stress for the adjective orthographic, orthographic. But here it's a noun. Orthography. Very good. Orthography. Good. Just like which word? Photography. Photography. Yeah, it's an easy way to remember it. How's that orthography use an apostrophe? Uh, ortho orthography. Home. Yeah, negative. Use. Huh? Use. Use. One more. One more step. Uses. <laughs> Uses. 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 All right. We are, we are processing these endings with a different part of our brain. You do and I do too. When I'm speaking, it happens naturally because my system one is thoroughly trained as a native speaker. So I won't say use for this word. I just would not say it normally. Now, maybe you can find a mistake in the videos if you look through them when it might happen, but it's rare. So a native speaker, when we're speaking, we will not normally make these mistakes. When writing, I make them all the time. When I'm typing, when I'm typing on Facebook or on, uh, in an email, I drop these endings or I use the wrong ending. As I told you, E-D-I-N-G, I mix them up all the time. Not because I would ever mix them up in speech. Shuohua, I don't think I would ever make that mistake. But I make them constantly when I'm typing because my system one is taking over and there's a part of the brain that controls the endings that's different from the part of the brain that chooses the words, the stem of the word or the root of the word. It's two different parts of the brain. And sometimes the part of the brain that's doing the endings gets sloppy. I'm just going to throw an ending up there. I don't care which one it is. So I often type ED when I mean ING. Or I'll miss an S. And I don't do it when speaking normally. You do it also when you speak. Because you have to concentrate harder. It takes longer to get that information from that part of the brain. This is an important point. It's worth putting in your notes. There's a whole book about it by Steven Pinker. He's a former disciple of Chomsky. He's written a lot of popular books on linguistics, many of them quite interesting. I don't agree with everything he says, but he has a book called Words and Rules. My field is Gozi Xing Tai Xue, and that's a really great book. I really, really like that book called Words and Rules by Steven Pinker. If you want to learn about this, he talks about this, not in detail about the brain, but he points out that it's a different part of the brain that's taking care of morphological endings in words in English and in other languages as well. So you will see these mistakes constantly. If you look on the internet, native speakers typing English. It's not just me. I'm representative. We make these mistakes all the time, but not in speaking. So you need to train yourself to slow down and put them in because they take more time and effort to retrieve the file. OK, uses. Uses. Uh, you, uses and our apostrophe before the, before the symbol, for the corresponding voiced sound. Thus, contra contrasting Y and How do we say? Yeah. Yeah, and mm -hmm. apostrophe, yeah. Uh, how can we say it? Let's make the laryngealized sound. Make a creaky voice, yeah, you can do it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Remember, yeah sound. Yeah. It's not it. Yeah. 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 Okay, so yeah. 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 And creaky is yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're excellent at it. You're very, very good. Mm. Apostrophe, you read beautifully. Um, but the one thing is TH. You need to watch your TH one day. The, the, not the, the. Okay, go. The Hausa letters, y and y chorus, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. correspond to IPA. Uh, These two symbols. So we've got a tilde under the J, remember. This is where a new place for the tilde. We've put it in two other places before with different meanings. Okay. Try differentiating between the. That was okay, but make it a little clearer. Differentiating. 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 Chi. Everyone differentiating. Differentiating. Again. Differentiating. Good. Nice. Try differentiating Good. between the laryngealized and non laryngealized. Continuation rise. Laryngealized and non-laryngealized non sounds Excellent. in Hausa words. In the, 
in the house hours. Um. Yeah. Yeah. And. Yeah and yeah. All right. Let's see if we can find that and play the files. You have to listen carefully. Yeah. 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 Everyone. Yeah. That's pretty normal and easy. Let's try the laryngealized initial palatal. Yeah. 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 Try it. Yeah. 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 Okay? You're very good at that. Your ears are great at this. Okay? Good. Which are included on the CD with the other house hour words discussed earlier in this chapter. Excellent. Very nice reading. Next. A slightly more common use of laryngealization is to distinguish, distinguish one stop from another. Everyone stop. Stop. This is an ah sound, not stop. It's stop. Stop. In American. Okay. Stop. Hausa and many other West African languages have voiced so languages. Languages. Lang, lang. Lang, languages have voiced stops. But contrast, contrasting with the ringalized stops. 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 Not stops. 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 There we go. But the mm -hmm. Which are sometimes implosives. Mm -hmm. In these sounds, in the these sounds, in these sounds, everyone, in these sounds, the S is pronounced as Z, so not these. All right, in these sounds, in these sounds. good. Okay. The cracky voice the, the is what? the creaky voice is most evident not during the evident pause. We've got a evident. big different clause here, a very different clause. N evident. Not during the not was a nut. Not not during the stop closure itself. Itself itself. Stop it stops everyone. Itself itself. Was it itself itself itself. Tss 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 tss. It's it's everyone itself itself. Good. But during the first part of the following vowel. Good. Similar sounds occur in some Native American languages. All right. So we can also have a con contrast between b and b and d and d. And in other languages as well of West Africa, not just Hausa, and also in what other languages? Native American languages. They have a lot of the interesting sounds that we've learned about in this chapter in Native American languages, not just North America, North, Central, South America. You'll find a lot of these. And wow, look at this really familiar title. And we're going to have a somewhat easier job but we're going to learn some additional things. We're going to learn some finer distinctions about VOT. Let's go. Tina, voice onset time. Time. We saw earlier. Saw, 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 saw. saw not so. Saw, saw. Uh huh. Good. We saw earlier that the terms voiced and voiceless. Voiceless. We, voiceless. Everyone, voiceless. Voiceless. Yeah, we don't say voiceless. It's voiceless. Voiceless. Right. Refer to the state of the glottis during glottis. I don't say is. I use a schwa there. Glottis. Glottis. Mm -hmm. During a given articulation. Articu. Q. Q. Mm -hmm. Articulation. Good. We also saw that the terms aspirated and unaspirated. And unaspirated. And um aspirated. Because un is your baby, so we're gonna stress that. Try it again. Aspirated and um, aspirated. Can you stress un? Um. Mm -hmm. Make it high. Um, there. Try it again. Um, aspirated and um, aspirated. There you go. Refer to the presence of or absence of a period of voicelessness. 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 Ness. Ness. Mm -hmm. Voicelessness. Ness. Voicelessness. A continuation rise, yeah. During and after the release of an articulation. Articulation. Right. Very good. So the difference between ga, ga, and ka, that, that's the pause they're talking about after the release of the stop. Go on. The inter interval mm -hmm. between. In interval. Mm -hmm. the, the interval 
between the release of a closure and the start of the voicing is called the voice onset time. Voice onset time. This is a compound, everyone. Voice onset time. Voice onset time. Mm -hmm. Usually abbrevi abbreviate Good. VOT. Abbreviate it. Good. VOT. Good. The easiest way. The easiest way to visualize VOT. Visualize. Here it's a Z. Remember, it's not so common in English. But here we need it. In the middle of a word, it's more common, like measure, pleasure. Everyone visualize. visualize. Not V, it's V. Visualize. visualize. Again. To visualize. Mm, not v. 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 Uh -huh. To visualize. Visualize. V visualize. All right, listen to me finish my model before you jump in. Visualize. No? You're saying V, we want V. Listen again. Visualize. V, visualize. Huh? There you go. Visualize. Visual. Not V, V, V. Uh-huh. Vis, vis. Vis, vis. Vis. Sort of like fish. Say fish. 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 It's not fish. Okay, fish. Fish. Good. Now make it vish. Vish. Now voice the sh part. Vish. Vis. Vish. Yeah. Vish. Vish. Not e. I. I. Vish. Vish. There we go. Now you're getting Vish. it. Visualize. Visualize. Okay, don't say e though. Okay. Visualize. Pretty good. V O T is by reference to reference. the reference. Oh, so I'm going to go. Uh, schwa, schwa illusion. Reference. Reference. Not ra. Re. Ra. Okay, I'm being very picky, excuse me. By reference. By reference mm -hmm. to the waveforms of a sound. This is the technique used in chapter 3. Chapter. Chapter mm -hmm. 3 to discuss the difference between Thai. Uh, discuss the what? The differences. 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 D. D. Uh -huh. Differences. There we go, beautiful. Between Thai and Dai. Good. The VOT is majored. Is. Is. Me majored. Uh -huh, right. In milliseconds. Not in, in milliseconds. In milliseconds. Good. Good, yeah. From the spike. Indicating the release of the stop closure. Stop closure. The stop closure to the start of the of oscillating of the oscillating of the oscillating Good. pattern. Pattern. Pattern mm -hmm. indicating the vibrations of the vocal folds in the vowel. If the voicing begins 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 Good. during the stop stop closure. Good. Before that is, the release. I.e. is that is. That is before the release. 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 Good. The VOT has a negative value. All right. Very good. And we've already done this last semester. And that's one reason that I wanted us to do it. We needed it last semester already, but now it's going to come in useful again. And for Sylvie, you need to go to Phonetics 1 and do three tutorials on voicing. And... Sophie, can you help her with the page number? You can do it a little later. But if you look on Phonetics 1, you'll see one of the pages is called Three Tutorials on Plosives and Voicing, or Voicing and Plosives, delayed in Phonetics 1. There are, three there are three tutorials, and they're very, they're not difficult at all. They're very easy and very informative, so you might want to do that too. Okay? And we understand what it's saying. So remember, it was a test question. If the voicing starts at about the time of the release of the stop, then what do we have? Zero, Zero onset. And if it starts quite a bit after the release of the stop, we have positive, positive and voicelessness with aspiration. If it starts before the release of the stop, we have a negative VOT and we have pre voicing. Let's go on.
Miranda. The top part of figure 6.7 shows the waveforms of the first parts of three of the Cindy words in table 6.2. Daru, Taru, and Taru. Is the second one going to be Taru? It is in English the way we're using it, but now we have to recalibrate. So for Cindy, it's going to be different. We have Daru, very heavily voiced. Then we have Daru, Daru, right? And then we have Taru, that one's aspirated. Okay, go ahead, I'll dig it up while you're reading. A name of a district. The dashed line indicates the moment of release of the stop. A time scale centered on that moment is at the bottom of the figure. In the waveform for Da, at the top of the figure, there is voicing throughout the closure, the release, and the, vo the vowel. This is fully voiced stop that has a negative VOT of minus 130 milliseconds. Very good. All right, let's just listen. Here's the fully voiced one, not an implosive. No. All right, that's fully voiced. Then, voiceless, unaspirated. Bottom. No. Try it, go. No. 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 All right, now voiceless, aspirated. No. Go. Taru. 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 Okay. And then we have a breathy one. We're not going to do that one yet. All right, so we have a really clear three-way contrast in Cindy that we can hear. So, Daru, Daru, Taru. Let's go on. Jerome, in, in the next waveform, Da. You don't have to say your names anymore. I guess we all know them. <laughs> go ahead. In the next waveform, Da. There are no voicing vibrations during the closure before the dashed line. Okay, vibrations is important, but it is actually a compound noun, so there are no voicing vibrations. There are no voicing vibrations right. okay. during the closure before the dashed line. This is, therefore, a voiceless stop. Let's look at the waveforms on 152 so we know what they're talking about. So for the, okay, this is a small enough group that it's easier to see. Look, look here, upper right hand, upper left hand corner of 152. You see these wavy lines here? And that is the what? Pre-voicing. So, everybody, daru. Da. We just have da, we don't have the ru. So, da. da. And this is the mm sound. That's exactly what it is, it's mm. Mm. And that's what it looks like on a waveform when we have that negative VOT. And here we have a tiny, tiny little burst here, just a little bit of, of friction from the aspiration. Okay, so we have da. Yeah. But it should be near zero VOT. Often it will go up to 20 milliseconds. If it's less than 20 milliseconds, 就不算。二十毫秒以内,我们就还是把它当作是zero-onset. Okay, it's not perfectly zero, but 二十以内的话, so that one is da. For ta, we have this quite a long period of frication from the aspiration. So ta, this is the h sound. Let's go back. Okay. The voicing starts very shortly after the closure. The VOT being less than 20 milliseconds. Milliseconds. Ma milliseconds, making this an unaspirated stop. To produce this stop, the vocal to produce this stop, to produce this stop, okay. the vocal folds are apart during the whole of the closure period, okay. but close together at the moment of release of the closure. At the moment of release. Uh, at the moment of release. Okay, of the moment, at the moment of release. At the moment of release Good. of the closure, mm -hmm. so that voicing starts as soon as there voicing is. Voicing starts. They're both equally important. Voicing starts. So that voicing starts as soon as mm, there is. As what? At soon. Uh -uh. Soon, soon, soon. Make oo really long and very oo. Soon. Soon. Not soon. You have a little oo in there. Too much um, 
Maybe it's tension in the lips. Everybody, soon. Soon. Not soon. Okay, soon. Soon. If you said su du in Chinese, it sounds pretty weird, right? Ah, just just his su du is very fast. Do the same in English. Soon. Right. And then I have to tell you a silly lian xiang that this brings to mind because when we make a sound, our brain immediately goes into pattern matching mode. When we hear a sound, our brain is going to match what's coming in with something it has heard before and knows and is familiar with. So when I'm emphasizing su and I'm saying it soon and not soon, I'm making the u really long. Do you know what sound gets matched in my brain? It's very funny. So wait, zhu de sheng yin. Why? Because when you're slapping the hogs to slap, 就是那个收水，拿收水喂给那个猪吃。If you're slapping the hogs, the way you call to them to have the hogs come over and eat is suwi, suwi. <laughs> so when I hear us practicing su, my brain is thinking of hogs getting fed. Suwi, s o o e y, suwi. You can you can find it on the internet. If you if you type suwi in, into、uh, YouTube, I bet you'll find. You'll find a video of somebody who's feeding the hogs. Okay, so su du. I just want to tell you the lian shang. If you make su really long, that's what a native speaker might think.、Um, but it's soon and not soon. And most Taiwanese say soon. And how about fang jian? Too short. Room. That's good, Carol. Okay, that's a good model. More more rounding for the R though. That's very good. Everyone, room. Room. Soon. soon, not soon. 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 There we go. Now you've got it. And how about Yue Liang? Moon. Moon. Okay. Now we've got it. Go ahead. As soon as there is sufficient. As soon. As soon、mm-hmm. as there is sufficient airflow through the glottis.、Mm-hmm. In the middle of the closure. Okay. Don't go down for middle. You have a lot of falling intonations, which makes me think you're at the end. But if you're not at the end, you shouldn't fall. So, at the middle of the、uh, in the middle of the closure. In the middle of the closure. Good closure. Vo- closure. Right. The vocal folds might be.、Mm, you went down again. The vocal folds、There、might be、go. might be in a position similar to that shown. To that. To that shown in the top right photograph in Figure six point six. Okay, I don't mean to make you impatient, but similar to that. So, what is it? Which is right. So some lia that we need to pause. I'm going to read this sentence, and I'd like you to read it again. All right.、Mm. To produce this stop, the vocal folds are apart during the whole of the closure period, but close together at the moment of release of the closure, so that the voicing starts as soon as there is sufficient airflow through the glottis. Can you try that one? To produce this stop. The vocal folds, the vocal folds, are apart during the whole of the closure, of the closure period. Closure period. Closure period. Right. But close together at the moment of release of the closure. At the moment of release. At the moment of release of the closure. Release is too long. At the moment of release. At the moment of release of、yeah. the closure. Good. So that voicing starts as soon as. As. The, as soon, as there is sufficient airflow. Sufficient airflow. Sufficient airflow through the glottis. Okay, you need sufficient taikaola because you need to leave some space for airflow because that's a shell tonic. And then I'm going to read the other one. In the middle of the closure, the vocal folds might be in a position similar to that shown in the top right photograph in Figure 6.6. I'm going to read both these sentences. Everybody make marks in your textbook where the pauses go, where the rises go, where the continuation rises go.、Um, That was that was really the same two th- same thing, even though I said it in two ways.、Um, where the stresses go, where the compound nouns are. I want everybody to take close notes in your textbook because we're going to start with these two sentences next time. So listen. To produce this stop, you may stop to tone full. To produce this stop, the vocal folds are apart during the whole of the closure period, but close together at the moment of release of the closure. So that voicing starts as soon as there is sufficient airflow through the glottis. I did a lot of things in that sentence. All of it sounds natural to a native speaker if I slowed it down a bit. But there are things that a lot of you have not yet made habit, and you're not 
paying attention to as well as you should. Last sentence in the paragraph. In the middle of the closure, the vocal folds might be in a position similar to that shown in the top right photograph in figure 6.6. .6. One more time. In the middle of the closure, the vocal folds might be in a position similar to that shown in the top right photograph in figure 6.6. .6. I didn't do them exactly the same because the yuan do chabu duo. So, Jerome, can you do those two sentences next time on Wednesday? Good. All right, practice before you come to class, all of you, not just Jerome. Practice those sentences and see if you can read them so you sound like a native speaker. And for Wednesday, what do you need to do? Vowels and consonants, chapter three, and then 11 will come after that. What else? Dictation. Dictation. What else? Web page number four. four. And let's see, anything else? I think that's about it. We'll see on Wednesday.